Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny wimey stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast, number 75. This week we are covering season 2 of Daredevil. Um, came out a couple of days ago, me and Stuart powered our way through it. So I've got Stuart with me. Hello. There he is. Loud as <laughs> ever. We've also got Amy. As always. Hello. And Eugene. Hello. He's on his tablet because he's it's Skype's playing up for him, so anyway, you might sound a little bit muffled. I'm sorry, best we can do. And last but not least, returning from the dead again, we have the reanimated Scarecrow. Hello, hello. Yep, there he is. <laughs> All zombified. <laughs> I just need to drink more tea. <laughs> no more beer for you. Anyway. I don't, I don't drink it, I just pour it. <laughs> there is a difference. Yeah, just pouring it into your mouth is still classed as drinking it. You but can't. I can't do that, I'm allergic to the stuff. <laughs> Note to self, spike beer with beer. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> so, this week Daredevil Season 2 dropped. And, wow. We got Punisher, we got Elektra. Looks like they really we picked got... it up this season. So Yeah, Season 2, uh... To, to me, um... The first um, couple of episodes were great. It felt a little slow in the middle and then picked up at the end. Yeah, but that's how Daredevil seems to work. Yeah. Like, the last couple of seasons were... Sorry, the last season was fairly similar to that. Where it was sort of quick at the start, built up, died off in the middle, and then became really good at the end. And this one did pretty much the same thing. It started off... For the first two, three episodes, it was I'd really say first high four. paced. Four, yeah. Um, and then for the next sort of four, it was setting up the last four or five. Mm. However, the math, the math. Anyway, that's sort of how I felt, and it was it was good. I had sort of episode one set up where Daredevil is now, relatively speaking, in the universe. Then is. The, it established Punisher, had him kicking all manner of ass, to the point where they originally were calling him the Army, or something along those lines, because he's yeah. just wrecking everything so catastrophically. Um, then him and Daredevil came to blows, and then an unlikely friendship formed, and now they're, now they're bro buddies for life. Sort of. <laughs> anyway. Punisher. Oh yeah, P- P- Punisher is it's very unpredictable, but at the same time, he's also very loyal. If we learnt anything from this season, we definitely learnt that. Um, now, Elektra, on the other hand, well, what can we say about her? Uh, she pit- pissed off the wrong people. Yeah, that's definitely true. Slightly, slightly makes slut slut? Yeah, sort of. Well, will put it this way. We know that the guys that created Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were massive Daredevil fans. Admittedly, I did not realise how many parallels there were between Daredevil and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles until <laughs> this season. It's like, wow, there's another one. Wow, there's another one. <laughs> Instead of... 
Instead of hand, you've got foot. They're both effectively psycho ninjas. So, yeah, it's just... <laughs> oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Why? Just I think the, the, the choreography for the fight scenes really stepped up a notch as oh, yeah. well. well. One thing I noticed is we didn't have much in the way of blind vision like we did in Season 1. No. I think they, they, they definitely stepped away from that this season. I don't know if that that's a good thing or not. Yeah. I think it's a good I thing. I think like I think I think for like when he's out of Daredevil outfit, like out of the Daredevil suit, I think it would have been cool to just have a couple of things yeah. of it. Yeah. A couple scenes with it, it but other exactly. than that, it I mean, it's not a major thing, but I just don't know if it will, if it will have added or taken away from Daredevil season two. Yeah. Um well, it was probably the only thing from season one that didn't sort of show back up was Daredevil Vision. Um, like, they did a lot of the sort of close-up on his face or on his ear with the sort of the implications that he was using Daredevil Vision, but without actually showing it, so. And Stick. Stick, come back. <laughs> and we got, definitely got, Stick is awesome. Oh, yeah. We definitely got some more backstory into the into the war that's playing out and the players involved and all that sort of stuff, so. And I love, I love how they edited, how, um, how they brought in the suit and his, um, his staff at the, uh, um, his sticks at the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, those sticks. Oh. Do you even just, like, the actual, des like, artwork design of them are really nice. Oh yeah, they looked really, really good. So, okay, relatively speaking, we've been spoiler-free so far. Um, so, and I like to try and keep the first bit of the review spoiler-free, and then we'll sort of get into the nitty-gritty of it in a minute. Out of ten, with the first season being, I think I gave it a seven or an eight. Can't remember. I think I gave this it an is... eight. Yeah, this is definitely better than season... This is a really good follow-up to season one. Yeah. And this is a solid nine in my books. Yeah, I would definitely give it at least the same rating that I gave the first season, which I can't remember what that is. But go back, <laughs> listen to the old episode, whatever rating I gave the first season, this is at least whatever that rating was, plus 0. 0.5. <laughs> <laughs> so, plus 8, 8.5, 9.5, somewhere around there. I can't remember what I gave the original season. Note to self, research my own stupid shit that I say. <laughs> anyway, moving right into it, let's get into the, the spoiler zone. So, if you're listening to this and you don't want Daredevil Season 2 spoiled for you, go to Netflix and watch it. It's only 13 hours, so... Actually, it's a bit less than 13 <laughs> I hours. Binge, I, I'll say, I binge-watched it Saturday. <laughs> yeah. It's actually close. Once the you only have, reason I... they're all they're all fifty minute episodes, so it's effectively twelve hours, eleven hours, something yeah. like that. So I watched the first three, and then the next four, and then the last of it this morning. So busy, busy. So, so I had, didn't have much else to do. Yeah, well, I've been working. Not much, on, no. Working on other things. Okay. Yeah, um, episode getting into the episodes. Episode one. Let's get let's get crack on episode one. Okay. So, how many how many months is this set after Fisk? Um, I'm just trying to remember now. I'm not sure. It's it's. It doesn't really say, does it, it? It doesn't explicitly say, but we do know that Fisk is in prison at this point. Yeah, it's like it's after his capture. Yeah, it's after. It's definitely set after, of course. Well, he's got the, the new suit. Um, a few episodes in, we find out that Fisk is in prison and he's finally becoming Kingpin. Um, in name. Sort of hilariously. But Fisk, it's... Uh, see, it's hard to guess. I'd, I'd like to say 6 to 12 months. Like, roughly the, the, the gap between the end of the season and the start of the season. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like that much. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, you get that feeling, and it's like, it feels like it's been a long time, 
But when you watch it, it feels like it hasn't. Yeah, it's, it's really sort of. It's weird. actually like, it's actually it's weird, but it's actually kind of well done in that regard. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. So anyway, we pick we pick up with a, it starts off with a random meeting of um, what gang was it? One of the gangs was having a meeting, and um, was it the Irish? I can't remember. It was one of, anyway, it starts off with a gang having a meeting in a table in a room with one tiny little window, and just out of nowhere, they just get shot to hell. Punisher. Punisher. Just oh, duh, yeah, absolutely clearly Punisher. levels the crap out of them. Um, and if I like the, the shot, the cop goes, whoever shot him put a hole in the front of his armour, destroyed his, destroyed the inside, and then put a massive hole in the back. What can yeah. punch through that much armour? My first thought was 50 cal. 50 cal would do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, he's basically... We, we learn later on that Punisher's backstory is that he was with his wife and and kid and, and child and kid at a amusement park sort of area that like a ferris wheel and stuff like that so i think it was just a park had a not a ferris wheel a carousel carousel the yeah horsey carousel. dealy thing yeah carousel yeah yeah um, carousel. yeah and they were there and there was a massive re- there was a massive sort of outbreak of gang violence which killed the wife and the kid and resulted in him getting shot in the head. But it also killed most of the gang, gang members involved. Later on, um, and so that's sort of his motivation, is he wants to get back at these gangs that ki- that he that killed his family. So he goes after them and systematically wipes them off the board, one after the other. Um... And as one goes down, another one gets picked up. Daredevil sort of manages to get involved. They have a nice fight. Punisher puts a bullet into Daredevil's helmet. Like, precision. While fighting and tumbling and rolling, he puts a precision shot into Daredevil's helmet so it won't kill him. An inch to the left, an inch to the right, and it would have. But he put it in the one place that it wouldn't. And um, that was effectively the start of their relationship. Their the love hate question mark relationship. <laughs> uh, mutual respect. It's hot. Yeah, I was just thinking, as I say, mutual respect by the end of by the end of the season. Yeah. Um, so they sort of come to blows a couple of times, and eventually um, he gets captured. And Daredevil gets is about to get arrested, and he's like, "Well, I've caught you." Um, what's his? I've forgotten his name already. I suck at names. Oh, the detective. Punisher. The cop? He captures. Oh, Frank. Punisher. And the cops and the Frank rocks up the cop from the first season, and um, who helped him out? And he's like, look, you can arrest me if you want, but if you do, then this guy's arrest won't hold because um, being caught by vigilante doesn't hold the same weight as being caught by a cop. So if you arrest him and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. And so the cop sort of agrees to let Daredevil go and arrests Punisher instead. Then, for whatever insane reason, I think, lack of a better word, Red feel sorry for Punisher because that's what Punisher always calls him. Always calls Daredevil. He calls him Red. <laughs> um, feel sorry for him. So Matt goes and decides to become his lawyer. So they defend him at the court case and eventually get him, he gets sent to prison after just going ape shit in the courtroom which was sort of hilarious to watch. So he gets sent to prison, bumps in a fisk. Fisk is like, ah, nice to see a fellow sort of person who came on the bad side of Daredevil join me in here, blah, blah, blah. And they have a bit of a showdown. And Fisk is like, this guy here, the dude who, the dude who happens to, by pure coincidence, be my rival, um, was actually secretly the guy that organized the big attack that killed all your family. 
he knows everything about it, so go talk to him. And Fisk u- uses his bullshit to convince him to go and take out the current leader of the prison. Sort of gang violence guy. So. He does. He absolutely annihilates him. And his buddies, in very short order. To the point that genuinely surprises Fisk to his capabilities. Um, during this confrontation, we learn something very interesting. That the gangs were set up. It was actually a police sting gone wrong, which resulted in the death of his family. So, what happened was the DA that just put him in prison, turns out she was in charge of said raid. And she did everything she could to cover her own ass and pretend she had nothing to do with it. Over time, she got sloppier and sloppier, and eventually they worked it out. Well, the the assistant for Daredevil, what's her name again? Wait, which one? The, 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 the chick that assists Daredevil uh, when he's a lawyer. Oh, Karen. Karen, yeah. Ka- Karen works it out. She's the first one to work it out. And she's now working with one of the newspaper guys to write an article about it. And... Um, He's going to get her killed. So, almost. Yeah. So, <laughs> basically, he br- he breaks out of prison. Um, God damn it! I forgot his name again. I keep thinking. Uh, Punisher. Punisher. Punisher breaks out of prison. Get it? God damn it! Get it right, or he actually will show up and kick you in the teeth. He, he better. <laughs> Let me get an interview out of him, and that'll be hilarious. So, Punisher (laughs) breaks out of prison. And... always organise a supernova. After working out... um, Quiet, you. After working out... (laughs) That the cops were involved. So, he then rocks up and just annihilates the DA. And almost takes out uh, the other lawyer, who's... Murdoch and Murdoch and... Why do I have to forget all the names? Why? Because you're a scrub. <laughs> yeah, I'm useless, I know. And this is the worst podcast ever. Just me talking a damn microphone. EJ, we miss you. Come back so we could we could annoy the crap out of you. Anyway, he... Um, um, what was that? And blame things on him. Blame things on EJ, yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Because then I can blame things on EJ, and I like blaming things on EJ. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Blaming things on EJ is easy. Anyway. So, Punisher breaks out, annihilates the cop shop, and takes and shoots... Why can't I think of his name? Not Murdoch, the other lawyer. Foggy. Foggy! Shoots Foggy in the crossfire by accident. Um, which then makes Foggy go, yep, no, you know what, I'm out of all this, I'm done. And he breaks up with Murdoch. Breaks up with Daredevil. And and, goes to Jessica, well, we think, it it, it hints he might be up on Jessica Jones. Yeah. That's definitely what it hints at. Um, which is really, really cool. I saw, I was like, oh, tie-in, tie-in. Well, they are bringing the three of them together for a Defenders movie, so... Sorry, Defenders well, and then, series. Well, there's four, they just haven't done the show yet. Yeah. Because they have got the actor for them, Iron Fist. Exactly. They're just going to start doing the show. Exactly. Um, so, anyway. So he goes and starts working for them, the whole lawyer thing's falling apart, Daredevil's desperately trying to, to stop Punisher, and then we learn about The Hand. The Hand is some super ancient organization that basically made up of immortals that use wibbly wobbly timey wimey bloody stuff, blood and stuff. I, I'm not exactly I, sure. Yeah, this is. I got even I'm not sure on this to be honest. Normally I'm I'm sort of versed in Marvel, but I don't really know much about the Hand, and I don't know what the blood blood was for. It's weird. So anyway, they use a ritual which is similar to the Lazarus Pit, 
in DC to keep them to keep themselves alive forever. Um, and they have the like, kids and stuff, and Daredevil sort of moving in on them, and it sort of sets them up as the the big big bad guy for the series, whereas Punisher is sort of the the side bad guy. By this point, Elektra's rocked up and is just tormenting the crap out of him. Um, and push comes to shove, and Stick gets kidnapped, and well, Elektra tries to kill Stick. And then Stick gets kidnapped, and then they break into the Hand's super top secret fortress based underground dealy thing to save Stick. Because the Hand wants Electra because she's the something something? The, the rising sun, the dark the sun, hand the, 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 movie. the something? Uh, the, the... What did I call her again, Stuart? Uh, uh, um. Shoot. Can't remember. Uh, <laughs> this is why you don't binge watch the shows. So, sure, you get important details. It's yeah, well anyway, she's there's a prophecy that involves a dark sun hey, or fuck, something. Screw it. She, screw it, she's the chosen one. Yeah, effectively she's the chosen <laughs> one. No no, seriously she is. She's, she's meant to bring she's meant to bring balance to the force, not living in the darkness. Well, technically she was meant to bring darkness to the force, not bring it to balance, but that's beside the point. Because their, their prophecy is this... With her on their side, they're invincible. So, yep. um... But Daredevil being Daredevil manages to convince her to see the light. And... Um... She joins his side and they fight off the hand. The rapey, rapey hand. Considering what And then she gets killed. Oh yeah, <laughs> then she, she gets her ass kicked. Big time. Um... And then he goes... Wow, to say that he, he goes, goes... He goes Super Saiyan. That's the only conclusion. He goes full enraged. Yeah, he, he he goes full Vegeta. You don't go full Vegeta. It's badly when you go full Vegeta. <laughs> he basically, yes, basically for went, the he, planet. He, he basically went full Vegeta when um Beerus hit Bulma. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's my Electra! <laughs> yeah, and just... And these foot soldiers, which were he was having a fairly hard time dealing with, just brushes them just... aside like they're nothing. And the the boss of them is, is all of a sudden like, oh, oh, I oh, see this ending badly for me. <laughs> I, I'm screwed. <laughs> that moment where you just go, oh, shit. Yeah. Pretty much. So, yeah. And it's, I left the lube like, at like home. The, it's like those vines. It's like those vines that's like, it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, yeah. So... Um, Daredevil just wrecks the crap out of him. And... Just goes to town. Oh, yeah. And then just up and decides to lob him off the side of a building. For good measure. Yep. Just to make sure that he's definitely dead and won't come back for the 14th time. Um, <laughs> long story short, it doesn't work. He comes back. We see that at the very end. Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe then he needs to behead him. <laughs> Off with the apply hand. Highland. <laughs> apply Highlander principle. There can be only one. <laughs> now I'm. Let's see if he gets all electric- electrical after doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Regenerate this. <laughs> oh, actually, that would be hilarious. That new stick of his, which he's given just before the final battle, um, which yeah. is. Like the most hilariously OP thing ever. It's like a grappling oh, hook like a... and nunchucks and a throwy stick with a retractable bloody winchy cable inside it. Sort of effect. It's, Tony, it's... Tony would love that. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, it was really, really cool. Anyway. Actually, so would um, Dick Grayson. I was going to say, the one, that, the one that would really love it is the chick on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that uses the, the batons. She'd absolutely love it. Sky? No, not Sky. One of the, one of the other Bobby. one of the others whose name I can't. Uh, remember. Bobby. Bobby, yeah, Bobby. Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Yeah, she yeah, she Do we get to me- she she coming to Nova? Uh, I can't remember. I think that's Bobby. Yes, I think that's Bobby. Yeah. Anyway, um <laughs> So yeah, so that stick thing is hilariously OP. <laughs> <sighs> I love, the, I love the sound it makes. The thud. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, it literally, when it hits something, it literally just makes this the metal thud that you would expect it to make. Oh, yeah. So. It's like, tong. So, so, I'm definitely looking forward to the next season of Daredevil to see where they're going to take it. But they've sort of set it up that the hand is now serious. And it's not going to play anymore. It's it's coming to just wreck everything. So, yeah, I'm curious to see where that's going to go. But that might even be the setup to Defenders, for all we know. Well, there was... There is a teaser now out for the Luke Cage um, show. So. Oh, okay, cool. So I think that's probably going to be next on their list and probably jump back to Jessica Jones. Yeah. Then maybe go to Iron Fist and then probably season three. Just depends yeah. how they want to do this. Yeah, they've got quite a lot on their plate now. Like, so they Marvel, have, a, I think they have is... a lot on their plate, but they've been doing it well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just thinking... I think we're reaching that point where this... Where it's like... Back in the day, Cowboys and in, Cowboys was everything. Every show was a cowboy show. And it reached the point where the cowboy bubble burst, and it burst quite hard. And now we have maybe one cowboy movie every now and again, like maybe one every 12 months as opposed to 20. And <laughs> looking at the superhero run right now, we've got, what, two dozen superhero TV shows. Not to mention... Well, you've got, what, Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow... Supergirl. Supergirl. You've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, um, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Luke Luke Cage. Cage. So there's ten superhero TV shows we can think of off the top of the head. Heroes was cancelled, so it doesn't count anymore. Um, (laughs) It didn't really count to begin with, but that's beside the point. As long as I did it really count, as much as I did enjoy it. Yeah, it was it was all right. Um, so the this and movies wise, there's just movies out the wazoo at the moment. So every sort of new season of movies that comes out, like every couple of months when there's a new wave of movies, at least one of them is a superhero y movie. So speaking of superhero y movies, so tonight. Oh, we're doing that announcement now. Oh yeah, we're doing that announcement now. Okay. Yeah. So, me, Stuart, and Amy are all going to watch Batman vs. Superman tonight. And we're going to... Yes. Rec- Bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bastards. Well, it's not our fault you're I'm, working. And then, I'm seeing, and then I'm seeing it again I'm Thursday. not now, though. That's the thing. I'm not working now. Oh, you're not? No. Oh. Sad face. I, was, I thought I might be. The thing was, I had to check... Amy jumped on the spot before I could find out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you might be able to get Stuart's Thursday tickets off him. Fuck no. (laughs) He's not taking my gold class tickets. (laughs) I'll just have to go see it on Thursday myself. (sighs) Oh, wait, I can't. I am working Thursday. Fuck! (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. I'll have to go see it on Friday. Anyway, you guys. We're, we're going to be watching it in a... We're actually probably going to be walking out from it in 12 hours from... Right now, 12 hours from this recording. So we're going to try and get a, at least a half-hour podcast up after that, reviewing the movie. Um, and we'll try and have that up as soon as possible. So, yeah, you guys know what it's all about before everybody else. Because we do this all for you. Well, you have already had the premiere for it. Actually, it happened yesterday. Yeah, I know. That's why we're getting but, it everyone now, had, but so. those, But those who have seen it have to keep quiet until a okay. certain time. Yeah. But we don't care. We don't fly by those rules. Anyway, um, so... What are we expecting from Batman vs. Superman? Um, I, them to kill um, it again? <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm curious to see if they if they show who what who what, who was in the Robin outfit that they've sort hinted, hinted and at. teased at a lot. Yeah. Well, um, like everyone's everyone's expecting Jason Todd. Yeah. But well, I love I'd love to be someone else yeah. just to, just to Thank throw you. everyone. Oh yeah. I love see I'd love to be Tim. 
Yeah, no one knows who Tim is, do they? No. Of course no one knows yeah. who Tim is. Tim Drake was the third Robin after Jason Todd. Okay. So what you're saying yeah, is... Jason calls them the replacement. So, so what you're saying is that Batman doesn't run around with one random boy in tight, tight spandex. He runs around with three random boys in tight spandex. No, he's four. run through five. Five? Well, four and one, four and one girl. Oh, God. So he changed his, he changed his taste once. He did, yeah, he, it, he was obviously... was, it was when he was an old man. Yeah, oh, God. Just leaving that the fuck Makes alone, it. and <laughs> just... Batman, why? It's just, Batman, what are you not telling us about yourself? Do you, do you, this is a safe space. Feel free to, well, feel supposedly free to tell us. Well, in the anime, supposedly in the animated show, he actually marries Batgirl, so... I'm he actually marries alone. Barbara. Yeah, because we've got Dick, we've got um, Jason, then we've got Tim, then we've got Damien. Yeah. And then the female is um, Carrie Kelly. And that was in the um, the Dark Knight Returns animated film. So, yeah. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to be watching Man of Steel again later today, probably. While well, we know movies. we're going to see a throwback to the, to the Metropolis fight in it. Yeah, well, I want to watch Man of Steel just to get myself back up to speed. It's like before every new Marvel movie comes out, and trust me, it's getting harder and harder. I watch oh, all God. of the Marvel movies through. God, 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 that'd be a pain in the ass. <laughs> <sighs> that marathon would almost be longer than a Lord of the Rings marathon at this stage. No, it is. It's like three times longer than a Lord of the Rings marathon. So. No, I, when I say Lord of the Rings, I mean oh, the, Hobbit the Hobbit as well. The Hobbit <gasps> trilogies. Yeah, the three Hobbits and then the three Lord of the Rings, like, full extended, like, the the <laughs> highest extended editions you can go. Oh, yeah. It'd be... That's what I'm saying, it's getting close. No, it's it's still longer than that. Because the, the four well, like Lord the of the Rings, the four Lord of the Rings extended movies are only, sorry, the three Lord of the Rings extended movies are only 12 hours, and the Hobbits are only two and a half hours each. Extended. Well, there's a there's one version I know of all the of all of, of the Rings movie, that's like extended director's cut, uh, director's edition uncut, which is like eleven hours twenty three minutes for the whole to get through the whole thing. Yeah. That's just one, like, imagine times that by three, then put that with the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, no. Good. Go. Anyway, yeah. back on topic as we are off. Yeah, the the the, the point being, um. I expect it to be a relatively average movie. I'm not going in this with my hopes set very high. But anyway, uh, just really quickly, we won the tickets thanks to Hoyts Australia. So, for just wanted to give them a quick shout out because it's deserved. Their contest. You was... got yours through Hoyts. I got mine through Roadshow. You did. Maybe I got it through Roadshow. Email yeah. says Roadshow. Yeah, it's Roadshow. My bad. My bad. Scrub that. Delete that. Hoyts has nothing to do with this. Screw you, Hoyts. You suck. You didn't give me anything. Um, we could... Roadshow <laughs> got us tickets. So... Um, Roadshow got us tickets. And so I just want to give a shout out to Roadshow. And uh, it's Event Cinemas, correct? Yes. Yeah. Event Cinemas, Australia. Um, so... Yeah, definitely check them out. I'm hoping we can get sort of the the cups and the popcorny tubs and stuff early, because that'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be that'd cool. That'd be really cool. So, is it 25 words or less? Which DC superhero would you not want to fight, and why? So, oh, I regret my answer. What was your answer, Stuart? My answer was so stupid. My answer is the Flash because because he could travel back in time and stop me before I do anything evil. See, I went a little bit more creative. A little bit more creative, tiny little bit. Which, my my response was Aquaman, because no one wants. It's, it's what was it, it was. It says, I don't want to fight Aquaman no one... because no one wants to be seen in public with Aquaman because he's Aquaman. <laughs> Wow! You went full on the, on the, on the so, Aquaman hate train. Oh yeah. You went full on that train. So yeah, and I did it as a joke. I was like, I'm not going to win this. I'll just put something stupid and be done with it. <laughs> so. <laughs> that makes my answer seem decent. That's <laughs> great. So yeah. 
a hero. I'm does sorry, does it that? have to be a good guy? Does it it says superhero. It has, says DC superhero. Yeah. Well, DC, but does it have to be a good guy? Yes, hero. Then again, you can't tell. Because I was going to say Lobo. Oh, God. So, uh, anyway, it's about time to do the... So, yeah, it's about time to do the model report with Eugene. Um, if, he has one. if we have any sort of technically issuey dealies, I'll just sort of jump in and vamp for a bit. So, over to you, Eugene. Well, today's hobby report is going to be on the Geek Fuel box for or last month. I got it in the other day, and this one I'm going to give a much higher review for than I did last month. This month's t-shirt is from Batman vs. Superman, and it has the, the eyes of all five of the main characters. Superman, nice. Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and then the villain of the piece. Nice. Yep. Other items that were in the box was a hardback graphic novel called Amazing, Fantastic, Incredible, a marvelous memoir, Stan Lee. And that's a, it's a $30 hardback, which basically is the childhood fantasies of Stan Lee that led, led to him creating the different characters. Nice. There is a post. There was a poster by Juan Munez called The Legend, and it's a Legend of Zelda poster. Uh, artwork style on it kind of resembles what a Funko figure looks like, and you could get one of two. The normal one, Zelda's wearing his standard green outfit, but they had a limited edition one, which there was 500 of. Well, I got the regular one, uh, but both are exclusive to Geek Fuel, and they do come with a certificate saying as much. Nice. Also, in also included the little, little boxes that you can pick up at most of the big box retailers and some of your comic book stores. The Batman vs. Superman mystery mini, mini vinyl figures that there's 12 different ones you can get. Well, there was one of those in the box. And their downloadable game this time was a game called Dino Side. Uh, this is an NES-inspired game that uses uh, mazes and dinosaurs. Nice. And... They had a bonus item that was in some boxes, which was a uh, Batman versus Superman movie ticket. That wasn't in my box either, but some people were lucky enough to get one. Nice. But I would rate this one a lot. I would rate this box a lot higher than the other box because I definitely liked what was in it. And this report's brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet. Short and sweet, love it. So I guess it's time to move on to the news with Stuart. Or not. I think Stuart's dead. Stuart! Yeah, I'm here, sorry. <laughs> Briefly cut off for a second. Uh, and we thought the tablet was going to give us technical issues. <laughs> Alright, uh, believe so... me, if you, if you watch my computer, you, you would understand the technical problem... I'm seeing on it. <laughs> no, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. <laughs> Alright, uh, on to the news. So, who wants to know what Stanley's least favourite cameo is? The one where he appeared on a podcast? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, I... Uh, so we know his favorite, um, his favorite uh, cameo was him being the DJ in Deadpool. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and it's actually funny because he wanted to, he wanted to stay longer in the strip club. <laughs> but his least really favorite, his least favorite uh, cameo was in uh, 2002 Spider-Man. 
the one with Tobey Maguire. And which one was that? Uh, the ver- the first one out of the Tobey Maguire 3. No, I mean, what was the he doing? Was... Uh, uh, save the little girl from flying from uh, falling debris. Okay. Any particular reason? Uh, yeah, actually, he, um, he actually uh, says, um, and I quote, Everybody's looking up going, ooh, and I'm one of the guys looking up going, ooh, for one second. And, it, and he wasn't happy with that. He wanted, he wanted, he didn't get to show off his acting. <laughs> and then there's an actual, Ugh. and then the, um, underneath the news story is an actual link with all the um, Stanley cameos in it from 1989 to 2014. So they haven't updated it from last year's yet. So. Meh. Not bad. So. I'm, I must admit, I actually missed a couple. You did? Yeah, I didn't realize where he was in like X Men and stuff. Okay. Because I, uh, I, uh, I was I was like ten years old at the time when the first X Men came out, so I didn't realize he was on the beach when the senator came out. <laughs> oh, that's right. When they turned the senator into a jellyfish man. Yeah, yeah, he's actually on the beach, but he like he comes into frame for like a second. Yeah, I haven't it's seen like, that movie in. in... Forever. I can't remember the last time I actually watched that. It's got it on a Blu-ray. I just can't remember the last time I watched it. So this is uh this is funny. This is a funny little story. Uh, Ben Affleck fires back at Matt Damon. Okay. So back in se- back in September last year, um, the Toronto International Film Festival, Matt Damon said that Jason Bourne could beat the shit out of Batman in a fight. Yeah. So Ben Affleck uh, came back today. Oh God! <laughs> please, <laughs> please said... tell me that someone has arranged that fight. Please. <laughs> like if I was, if I was Snyder and I was working on Batman vs Superman, and I heard him say, "Randomly have Jason Bourne come in." Yeah, I would have a random cameo of Bourne without calling him Bourne, fighting Batman and have Batman kick his ass. Just for just like a well, split this, this second is, shot. <laughs> this is a uh, Ben Affleck's response to this. Matt can't even beat me up. Never mind Batman. <laughs> yeah, so true. So I remember Affleck. I just thought, I wanted to mention more, right? that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this is funny, and I didn't pick up on this either. But this is great. So Mark Hamill. So also we know who Mark Hamill is in the DC universe. Yeah, the greatest Joker of all fl- flipping time. Oh, yeah. Didn't realize that there was a Batman uh, reference in his name, Jeez. and neither did, and neither did I for a while. If you take out the M in Mark and the L at the uh, and, and the um I double L in his last name, it actually spells Arkham. <laughs> I don't Hello. I don't actually know what to say to that. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I know. You, you completely missed this. No, it's not that I completely and missed then, it. It's just, how do people notice that shit? So I was way too <laughs> well, much trouble to hit. A fan, a fan actually tweeted him, and it was like, at um, because at, he has his Twitter, and I follow it, and it's like, is this just coincidence? And then um, Mark Hamill replies, embarrassed to admit, I never noticed this until now. Clever Bat fans brought it to my attention. Hashtag Crown Prince, Prince of Clu- of um Clueless. <laughs> Wow. Isn't that Deadpool? Uh, no. <laughs> no, that's the... Deadpool is the crown prince of hat talk. <laughs> I thought he was God's perfect idiot. That works as well. Oh, right. Jesus. And finally, the month hiatus for Flash and Arrow is over when they come back this week. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank God. When's the crossover? When are they girl? back? When's the... Uh, there is, um, that is 28th of March. Next week. So next week. So, yeah, yeah. so, um, because, yeah, they've, we've got the preview up on Save Sci-Fi where they have a race, and that's, it's like, yeah, yeah, that is not a reference to the Superman versus Flash running race at all. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so Flash comes back tomorrow with the episode, uh, Trajectory, which shows a... F- well, um, which the villain of sorry villainess in this is a female speedster. 
Ooh. And so, but and so, but when she runs, her blur, her like her blur is the same as Barry's, like the color is. Okay. So everyone thinks the Flash has gone evil. Oh. Of course they do. Yeah. So yeah. They really. What they is really it with need people? Just, what is people are just like? Oh, uh, look, it's hang a, on, guys. It's a... I'll be right back. I just got a phone call. Oops. Wow, fail. Somebody has got to do something rather important. And out the airlock he goes. See how long it takes him to notice. <laughs> so, moving right along. So yeah. So the the the. What is it with the Flash series? It's like, the bad guy needs to be a speedster. Hmm, what colour are we going to make him? The same as Flash. Why? So people think the Flash has gone evil. We've done that twice. That's not the point, let's do it again. But, okay, this, com this comes back to my, my point I've been saying for ages. Hollywood does not have an original thought in their entire collective brain pans. Oh, well, I disagree. Hollywood but... does have an original thought. The problem is that... Uh, Sorry, not, the, the those who have original the original thoughts, thoughts don't have any power well, it's not to that. implement the thoughts. No, no, it's not that. It's that an original thought is a gamble. Original thought is a massive, massive risk. Taking an idea that you've already got and going, oh, look, I know we've made 57 million 007 movies... And this one is effectively the same as the last 46 of them. But the bad guy is, uh, spin the wheel, Russian. Spin the wheel, Chinese. And because there's already, they, they go, well, we've already got this 007 fan base. They'll buy whatever the hell we put out. So we just keep putting out shit and they'll keep gobbling it up and it'll make us all of the money. And whereas if they put out, a, say, a Kingsman, which is a... 007 movie that's better than most of the more recent 007 movies by far um, well we do have Kingsman 2 coming so yeah I know but it's, a, but it's a massive massive gamble and they tend to not like to gamble on new ideas unestablished ideas but that said they could gamble on other ideas like say some of Matthew Riley's books for instance like I Stay Tuned <laughs> would make an <laughs> epic movie and it's it'd be relatively so be, cheap um... to make because it's effectively three locations. It's an ice station, an underground cave, and an ice shelf. And that's the whole movie. <laughs> that's all the locations you need. Uh, you got to admit those seven sacred stones would make a hell of a movie too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But you got to start at the beginning. Like Temple would make a good well, movie. No, seven you're not. sacred stones and uh, the scarecrow verse are separate. Yeah, I know that. So. Are. You can get away with doing both. Still. And there's been four... Studios have made four attempts to make a Matt Riley movie, but he will not let them do it the way they do to everything else and completely butcher it. He insists on being part of the creative process. And he pulls the plug on them when they start going, oh, no, this won't work. Let's do this. Even though he's written the script. He wrote the stories in a script form so they don't have to fuck around with shit. And they insist on doing it. And he just goes, no, nah, you're not doing it. Exactly. And that upsets me greatly. I would love to make a... If I was going to do a Six Sacred Stones, I'd do it as a TV show. The Stones oh, movies yeah. need to be a TV show more than a movie. It'd be really hard to yeah. do The Stones as a movie series. Or as oh, ABC stations. tried and failed. <laughs> yeah. The ABC tried to do them as a, as a series and failed. They did? Pulled after two episodes. Yep. They were actually doing it well, but... It got, got, not ABC, BBC, oh, okay. got pulled. It got pulled after two episodes because it was too risque and no one was really, no one really wanted to watch it. So, oh, okay. mind you, they did put, they did put the timing against stuff like Top Gear and Doctor Who. Exactly. Well, what the hell do you expect? Is it exactly? We, well, speaking of books that have they, been made into TV shows, tomorrow fail. when the war begins, coming out next in this time next month. On, Again, on uh, yeah, but it's a TV show, not a movie. So hopefully they'll do it right. Not bloody likely. Yeah, probably not. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what how they treat season one of that. So, and it actually gives me a reason to watch normal TV for a change. <sighs> I can't watch normal TV after six. 
there. Oh. There's suddenly there's interference in that area. Oh, that's when someone fires. That's when they fire up the jammer, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. What? Who fired? Around six o'clock here, you can't watch normal TV. Why? Or you get a static broken image. What the? Well, someone in her area is playing with a jammer. We don't know. Anyway, well, let's go should, back on what we're... You should be able to try and get them with an... kick their ass. Yeah, anyway. That's From 6pm go... every night. So, so, Master Stuart, you're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Annoying phone calls. Yeah. Well, we threw you I out... actually have to take... We threw you out the airlock, so... Eh. So, anyway. The force, is a, the force shall sustain me. <laughs> so, anyway, back to the Flash news. So, so yeah, uh, as we said, Flash and Arrow coming back this week. Uh, Arrow comes back with the episode Broken Hearts, where Cupid returns to Star City. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. No one likes Cupid. No, I'm just every time someone mentions Cupid, it makes me think of the... Um, the Cupid from Supernatural. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be the Cupid from Charmed. That is an incredibly oh, good God. point. Oh, no, we do not mention that. We do not talk about that. <laughs> Apparently we do now. <laughs> so. I mean, I guess we could talk about Charmed and the fact that uh, me and Jody are going to Sydney Supernova! Yeah, I, I'll I get, wonder... I'll go get the duct tape. <laughs> yeah. I can't afford to go. Sure you can. We'd just duct tape Stuart and, Amy, uh, Stuart and Jody up, and you and Scarecrow can go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Considering the tickets are in my name, I don't think so. And you, you act like I can't Photoshop. <laughs> I don't think he can. Grow On top of that, his beard the ticket is mine. doesn't. The ticket does not involve having a. Having to um, have a photo that looks like you. Exactly. And hello, Photoshop no, boy. Credit, no, but the credit card. <laughs> What's it going to matter to you? You're, you're, you're tied up in a corner with Jody. Lightsaber. <laughs> <For everything. laughs> not really. Not, on the other side tape. of town. Not, not, not duct tape, it won't. <laughs> duct tape <laughs> solves everything. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that would actually be absolutely hilarious. Do a short with a Jedi hilarious. gets a lightsaber with the duct tape over the top. He goes to turn it on and nothing happens. <laughs> he can't get the duct tape off. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Star Wars Rebels Ooh. is coming up to its season finale, which is next week. Ooh. So yeah, next two episodes are going to be very special, very big. This week's episode is called The Mystery of Chopper Base, not related to the droid at all is, in the show. Is it to do with Vietnam? Because... Oh. Because there's... Quick, too soon. get to the chopper! Do so. <laughs> get to the chopper. But no, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so far, um, there is a little, feat, uh, little teaser out for the episode. Uh, Disney always release one every week for the episodes. Uh, showing, um, and it shows Rex um, and Sabine being attacked by some sort of crap, like oh the, the giant sort of crabby looking dealies. Yeah, we get to find out what those things are. Nice. And then next week's episode will be on Malakor, which will which is going to be very very interesting. To, to fans who know the Knights of the Old Republic games, Malakor is a very special place in those games. Are you going to explain it's the, it? It's the, yes, Malakor is the final, lev uh, final level in Knights of the Old Republic 2. So there is, a, there is a very big chance that the Knights of the Old Republic games could potentially become canon. Which, to be perfectly honest, would be really, really good. Well, that would be incredible if that's the case. Yeah. Well, considering they just didn't they just re-release like a HD version of them or something. 
No. Oh, there's a fan made. There's a oh, fan made mod. Fan made one that's that's HD. Yeah, there's a fan made mod from for um Knights of the Republic one. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've only played. I've only they, played the second one. If they do make the Kotor universe canon, that could potentially <laughs> open up to them doing a HD reboot. Or re- cool. remaster, remake. Because be cool. that would then give Disney the rights for it. Oh yeah. Which would then probably shut down the fan, <laughs> the the uh, fan mod. Uh, yes and no. See, Disney is r- really, really weird compared to LucasArts. LucasArts tends to be very supportive of fan stuff, whereas Disney tends to be more of a "You've got a Mickey Mouse on your place, and give me all the money." So, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm more surprised there wasn't a Mickey Mouse ears hiding somewhere in Force Awakens. I heard there was. There was? I must have missed it. I must have missed it. Yeah. I bet you know, I bet you know what it was. I bet you it was on that star map. And there's just like th- a bunch of planets like that do the Mickey Mouse face, um, yeah. ears. Because every Disney movie has Mickey Mouse ears somewhere in it. Oh yeah. So, so yeah, it. next couple of weeks are going to be very interesting. For a Flash, Arrow, and um, and Rebels, and oh, yeah. Supergirl, because Supergirl gets the crossover episode next week. So, oh yeah, that, Shield's that's, back. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, Shield's back. But Shield. No one really cares that much about Shield. I've, uh, I'm enjoying Shield, but um, to it's me, it's kind of lost its um, shininess. It's kind of lost its yeah. It's kind of lost its appeal to me now. Yeah, we'll put it this way, which is sad. Because I actually really enjoyed one and two, season one and two. To me, it feels rudderless at the moment. It feels like it's drifting, not exactly sure where it's going to go, because it can't strike into too much new territory because of Civil War. So, it's sort of, yeah. And I think that's... It's sort of... It's been hamstrung since day one because of it has to tie into those the other movies, into one massive mm. universe, and that's sort of a bit of a problem. What I would love to see is a S.H.I.E.L.D. Daredevil crossover, or the equivalency of that. S.H.I.E.L.D. Jessica Jones, S.H.I.E.L.D. one of the, the Netflix series. Even if it's only for a minute. Like, we're, they're in New York, and we, they have, just as they're driving along the streets, on top of one of the buildings in the background, you see Daredevil crouch down. Or one of the people they're talking to outside something that happened in New York happens to be Jessica Jones, the same, the same actress. Um, that'd be cool. Well, the, uh, I wonder. Well, uh, it's briefly speaking of Devil before we um, finish off, did they make an Avengers reference in that, in in season two? Because um, there was a line I heard. There was a line I heard. They were talking about um, the kid it was in upstate New York and didn't know where they were. It was like, is that an Avengers reference? Oh yeah. That's what I thought. It was like, is that an Avengers tie-in we're gonna have? So uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, any other news? Uh nothing major. Nothing more major. Which is probably like the next week will probably will be um like next week will be all about Batman vs Superman. Obviously. No, it won't be. No, it won't be because there isn't a podcast next week. <laughs> yes, no I'll power. still put. I'll still post news up on the page. You better. So anyway, that's <laughs> that's it for this week. <sighs> We're gonna re- we're gonna undo the spell that brought Scarecrow back to life and put him back in his box and leave him there for a while. Um, uh, bite me. <laughs> uh, no, that's my job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. shooting selfie oh. face. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, make sure you keep an eye on facebook.com slash save sci fi. For all of your sci-fi related news, check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast for all your podcast related stuff. Check out facebook.com slash sci-fi wars for a new page that I have started and it is really, really cool. You need to keep on it. It's effectively all of our weekly verses. I am redoing a lot of the pictures, upgrading them, making them look way better. Make sure you go over and check that out. Um, That's it for this week. We will catch you guys next time. Check out Garrison Sevens. Oh yeah. Check out Garrison 7, because there's some really awesome news coming from them really, really soon. As always. He keeps telling me to tell you, but then he doesn't actually tell the news. Bye! Bye!
Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.